Well, we're going to be getting into our next segment. This is the Debonair Ideal segment, sponsored by Debonair House, makers of uh, the Debonair line of cigars, as well as Indian Motorcycle Ultra Premium Cigars. And uh, for folks who are going to be in the Myrtle Beach area this weekend, Mr. Phil Zengi uh, is going to be uh, around for Bike Week, from what I hear. So if you're down at Myrtle Beach, be sure to check them out. Uh, be sure to see our friends over at the Cigar Shop as well. Um, but in the uh, debonair ideal segment, we talk uh, – basically what we do is we have the conversations that people may have in a cigar lounge. So the idea here is uh, cigars are a conduit to these conversations in life. And, you know, you, you're in a cigar lounge and you talk about a, lot, a variety of topics. Well, I'm Shanghaiing this one <laughs> because I, I love boxing. And uh, Phil Zengi loves boxing. I know Aaron's not quite as big up on the boxing, but he's a good sport. Uh, here tonight and Enrique I know you and I we kind of have this connection to one boxer your connection is a lot stronger than um than myself but it's that's Chocolatito Gonzalez yes yes that's for sure I mean I, I remember Chocolatito uh when he was still fighting in Nicaragua we used to go to the to the boxing fights and we were uh, first row smoking our cigar having a drink watching him fight I mean of course, that can never happen again, but uh, because, because of the cigar, because we're not allowed to smoke cigars on unboxing anymore. But, you know, it, 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 was, it was a great thing. Sadly, the last fight, I mean, I'm sure you will agree with me in that one, it, it was very unfair to him. He, he, he should have not uh, lost the fight. I mean, that, 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 that was a very, it's one of the things in, in boxing, you're like, ah, oh, come on, give me a break. That's, uh, he fought like a warrior, and you know, and, and they give the the, the 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 belt to somebody else. I'm like, eh, not not quite happy as as, as it should be, but it, it is what it is. It, I thought that was a dangerous fight he was taking, though. Um, it was. I thought. I I do think he got robbed of the decision. I think every fighter is going to be, for the most part, unless you're Floyd Mayweather, and I think his day will come. They're going to be on that 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 end of a decision, yeah. But they're going to be on that end of a decision um, with that. But I mean, I was surprised because it was a majority. It was a majority decision. Um, that you know, in terms of that, I was surprised he wasn't. You know, one of the that meant one of the cards was a draw, and the other two went to uh, to his, I, I think it's a, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not even going to try to. But he's from Thailand, right? Um, and, and, the, and the reason is these Thailand boxes are th- – boxing is very big in Thailand, especially in the, uh, the lighter weight classes like the flyweight and the super flyweight. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was – so he was fighting – you know, he was fighting a very good fighter too. But I do think he got robbed on that. But I guess, there's, I guess the rematch talks are in play right now. Well, I guess so, but still, I mean, it's uh... – the definitely screw with was his score. He was he was unbeatable. I mean, uh, I mean you can see in the fight. I mean, four hits right in his face, and mm-hmm. and, and to the third one, he he got a point down. Yeah. And after that, when you see how many how many throw and how many landed, he had double hits of, of the opponent, and still <laughs> they give the fight to him. And like, really? If you if you would have come to me, it's like it, when, when they're waiting for the score, it's like I would have bet everything I had that he was gonna get a fight. And suddenly, I'm like, what? I mean, I, I couldn't even watch the the, 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 the triple G fight after that. I'm like, really? I, I was so disappointed. It's like this, this is not the boxing that I remember. Well, of course, we all remember that fight was uh, Alexi Arguello and, and Brian. The first, first, the second one was fair enough. But the yeah. first one with the water, you no, know, no, give me my water, not the other. Special water. <laughs> Special water. Special vitamin. <laughs> you know, and then he knocks the other guy, Alex Arguello, down. And you're like, really? Did this really happen in boxing? I thought that we passed that part. You no. Know, we're back to, back to the same, 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 same spot. So it's, it's a sad story. I'm sure Chikoratito will will rise from this, there's no doubt. Uh, being a Nicaraguan, he's a true fighter. Uh, this, that, that's, there's uh, no doubt. I mean, you have, uh, uh, now only Alexi Arguello's 
uh, 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 combinations there, but you also see his heart. And I remember Alexei Arguello when he interviewed, and, and he said that you can show a, a person how to balance, how to throw uh, punches, how, how to do combinations, how to take balance away from the other opponent. But when you're uh, uh, down with, with your right hand broken in the, from the first round and get, getting up and knocking the other the opponent down, you cannot teach that. It's either you're born with it or you're not. And, and, and that was Alexei Arguello, and I see that a lot, a lot in Chocolatito. So I, I'm, I'm sure he will race and he will come stronger than ever. Yeah, I, you know, I'm glad you actually brought up Alexis Arguello too, because uh, that was something I was I wanted to hit on as well. You know, um, Arguello, he came along at a time right after when Sugar Ray Leonard had retired. I guess again, there was a point where Sugar Ray Leonard retired. Um, that was when he had the long five year layoff, and then uh, Arguello had won the lightweight title. And he went up the challenge prior, and for folks who don't know, Aaron Pryor was an undefeated junior welterweight. Fought out of Cincinnati, um, so that was a that was really a super fight that was taking place in, in '82. I remember it was one of the last fights I watched with my grandfather. Um, I I remember. I mean, it was a 14. It went. That's when they went 15 rounds. It was an epic 14th round there, where um, you know, and, and and the heart was there. I I definitely just saw the. I mean, and I think a lot of us, even though Pryor was the U.S. fighter. A lot of us, I know, were rooting for Arguello that night because there was such a heart of that guy. I mean, if, if, if you if you recall the fight, it's uh, Alexi had him. He, he was he was hit. He was completely. He was saved by the belt. Yeah. He wants to corner Alexi. He, he was ready to, to to go after him and, and, and finish the fight. He gets his special water and he goes up like a bull and knocks Alexi Arguello down. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're like Alexi Arguello was like, what happened here? <laughs> do you do you, are you old enough? To, I was. Do you remember? Did you watch that fight? Were you old enough for that fight? Because I remember. I was. You know what? I was fourteen or fifteen when that fight was on. You know what? I, I to be honest, I do not remember uh, seeing the fight uh, uh, as the moment it was taken. But I do remember uh, my family, especially my dad, screaming at the TV <laughs> when the fight started. It, 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 all the fight, and actually, I think it was the only time I saw my dad crying. After after uh, Alex Arguello lost the fight, so it's uh, I, I like I said I do not remember at that time. I mean, for me, it was many all the fights more important, but it, that memory always will always stick with me. And that was before the revolution. That fight, right? The revolution happened. Or was it right around the revolution? Uh, the revolution was 70, 79. So okay, the revolution so was already fight. on. So the revolution was already going yes. on at that point. Yes. Yes, so it was, it was a way for Nicaragua to scream to the world, we're still here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With all the fighting and everything. C compare Chocolatito, I mean, because they're both Nicaraguan icons. Compare Chocolatito to Arguello. Has he, Arguello is definitely the Nicaraguan icon from what I know, but are they, would you say Chocolatito is now getting to a point where he's at that level of Arguello in terms of being beloved, or do you think he's still got more to go? That's a very tough question because uh, uh, I mean Alexei Arguello was the, we always need the nickname the champ. He always going to be the champ. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter if, if he's a great a great fighter in front of him, he always going to be remembered as the fight uh, as the champ. So it, it's a very unfair um, way to, to compare, it, especially in the, in the time frame. But remember uh, the ones that that, that pick up Chocolatito, they actually put that his nickname Chocolatito was Alexei Arguello. Uh, his father, Chocolatito's father, a nickname, a nickname was Chocolate. So mm -hmm. Alex Arguello was like, okay, so you Chocolate, you Chocolatito. Oh, uh, okay. And, and yep. So Alex Arguello was the one that they, they got the Chocolatito at an early age and started training him and, and started teaching. So that's where you see a lot of his style in Chocolatito. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting there. Now, Arguello, he, he retired and he went, he he fought the Sandinistas, right? Yes. He first he was with the Sandinistas, then he if he retired, then he fought against the Sandinistas. But eventually he came back. I mean, eventually he then he had a career in politics, right? After that, yeah, he was the mayor of, of Managua. Now, was he? What was his political position at that point? Was he still against the Sandinista government, or was what was that position there? No, actually, he, 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 they actually ran on, uh, a, as a, a Managua 
mayor uh, was the Nicaragua, with the Sandinista flag. So he was with the Sandinistas. Okay, interesting. And, you know, he was, they said he committed suicide, right? But I guess there's some yes. question on that, right? Uh, there, there have been a lot of gossip about it. Uh, uh, you know, it's one of the things uh, I feel like sometimes it's better not to ask. You yeah. Know, what, 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 whatever the answer is, uh, we're not going to get the chin back. So, you know, it's uh, it, it's uh, it was a sad uh, ending in the aspect, but he did leave a great legacy. And he did put the Nicaraguan flag very high in the air. And that's one of the things that we, we always have to remember for him. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Did um, I got another question just on boxing in general in Nicaragua. Is it um, is it a sport that has just remained popular in Nicaragua or is it one of those sports where, you know, you have the Arguello and you have the Chocolatito and it's been popular because of those guys? Well, he, he had always boxing, and I'm sure he has a happen now in Nicaragua and in, in, in everywhere, even here in the United States. It, 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 it's a sport mainly for, for, the, for the poor people. I mean, that's how they start. I remember a, a one, a, one, what's his name? One that it used to be a world champion as well in Nicaragua uh, was uh, in the 90s. Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, slipped my mind. I remember. Having lunch with him one time in Vespuesto de Mercedes, and he told me, I think, you know what? It's a, it is a very cruel sport because we fight because we are hungry or alive. And when we make it to the top, we cannot eat everything we want because we have to take in shape. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's, it's a very cruel one, it, 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 if you put it that way. I mean, uh, you never see a rich a, a, a kid becoming a great fighter. They, they have to come from underneath because they have to have the hunger. Mm-hmm. Hunger to go up, to go, to go to succeed. I mean, you saw that in Emmanuel Pira Duran. I mean, it, it's a great example. It, 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 I mean, all those great fighters. I mean, they, they, they came from, from very poor uh, environments and, and they had to fight their way up in that. So, uh, yeah, Nicaragua boxing has been always been very popular. Uh, of course, it, it went to the, to the, to the top of the, of the hill where Alexia Arguello was, was in, 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 his, in his prime. Uh, uh, but uh, since that time, we've always been a, a boxer, a country. Did at the trade show last year? Did you get to meet Chocolatito? Chocolatito? Well, I I didn't see him in the trade show, but I I have seen him in Nicaragua many, many okay. times. Okay, have you met him? Have you met him? Yeah, yeah. I I did not get a chance to meet him at the trade show because I was interviewing someone when when he came to the booth at Drew Estate. <laughs> so I was very bummed, but I couldn't break a commitment. Uh, and it was actually a pretty big interview I was doing at the time. So I, uh, I really, I, but part of me wanted, and as much as I wanted to do that interview, it was part of me was I really wanted to go meet Joe Colazito because he's my favorite <laughs> pot. Uh, despite what our sponsor, the cigar shop people, uh, uh, the, the co-owners think of that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> not not Mark Foley, by the way, but uh, the other two guys. But yeah, they they bust on me saying boxing's a dead sport. I don't think it's a dead sport at all. I think actually it's going I think it's I think it had a a valley, right? It's not a peak. I think it was in a valley. Uh, I think Chocolatito has done a lot for this to help that sport a lot. I mean, for a flyweight Enrique in the US to get on a on a on a national broadcast, oh, yeah. it's unheard of. We flyweights are yeah. just not we we haven't had a flyweight cha- we haven't had a flyweight here since like I think Michael Carbajal. You got to go back to in the '90s, so it, it's a big. It was a big deal for him to headline cards at, at you know, or be co-headliners in, in it here, especially at Madison Square Garden. I could see in, in the forum in Inglewood to some extent because they get the Mexican boxers come on up there. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it's uh, it, 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 it's something unbearable, and actually, it, it, he was so good that they couldn't hide it anymore. They had to put it, put him in, in, in that situation. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, you know, it's uh, it's a fall. Everybody falls in, 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 in life. I mean, he will get up and he will race stronger than before. Exactly. Um, I got one more question. Is what are who are some of the other fighters right now you've admired? Oh wow! It's uh, well, TPG. It's it's uh, he's he's definitely in his peak. I mean, that's uh, that's one of the beauty. Every time I see Chocolatito, first Chocolatito, then TPG. 
that, that uh, he, he definitely it's it's somebody that I do admire a lot. I love the way he fights. Like he said, I, I fight like Mexican, always going forward, not, never stepping back. Uh, so I, I will say after Chocolatito, I will go for Chupiji. Wow. You know, and I think the way boxing is right now, he will have a title belt. What what I really liked about Gonzalez uh, Chocolatito is um, – you know, he was a, he was just a true champion. He wasn't a manufactured paper champion, as far as as things go. He, he really, I mean, he controlled that flyweight division. He went up to super flyweight. Um, I I kind of hope he doesn't go much further than that, because it's a, you know when you start putting on body mass, ten to fifteen pounds above one twelve, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So I'd really love to see him. You know, like I said, but I think we will see him. Back and he's not gonna be disappearing. Like sometimes when a fight on loses, it's no. tough for them to come back. I don't think we're gonna see that with this kid. No, that, but for sure. I mean, you're absolutely right. It's it, it's tough for him to go up. I mean, especially with his, his height. It's he's, he's uh, well, I don't know if you see, you see him first, but he's, he's kind of short. Uh, so yeah, he is. Uh, he has his limits of how how he can go in weight. So, but uh, uh, as what he has done is he has done like, great things. That's yeah, not I mean, yeah, Pacquiao did it, but he's taller, uh, different body frame. So it's a different story, I think, with Manny Pacquiao, who was a flyweight. Oh, completely. Yeah, and uh, I have my doubts how he got to that weight too. I'll just keep <laughs> it at that. I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Well, if, 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 you know, if you see my weight, I, I should be a, a heavyweight champion, you know. Well, right. You know, except the champion heavyweight, you know, that would mm-hmm. be. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Aaron, I know, I know you're not the boxing guy, but any, anything else you want to add on here? Um, you, you brought up Duran, and I actually just last week I watched the movie um, Hands of Stone, which is the story of Roberto Duran. Oh, great movie. And uh, Enrique was kind of talking about you know how they grew up, and it, it showed it very well in that movie how he kind of where yeah. you know he was fighting as a, as a little kid and kind of grew, went up that way. And um, after he beat Sugar Ray Leonard, you know he wanted to have some time to just kind of enjoy his life, like you know all the the money and the fame and the status that he had achieved, he wanted to be able to enjoy that. But his, his promoter got him right back into that second fight and he didn't really have a chance to enjoy it. And he had to really, really scramble to train and make weight for that second fight. And, uh, you know, I think it just kind of took, took its toll on him and he kind of just, it was a, you know, it was a tough time for him after that, you know, that second fight, uh, the way it ended, um, he really had a battle through kind of getting his head right again to come back, but he did come back and he, he did very well after that as well. Yes, indeed. I, I'm, I'm excited. That, that's, that, like you said, it's a great movie. I did, I did enjoy it. Actually, we did watch it for all my kids, my wife, everybody here in, in, in the house. Like, hey, fam, hey, guys, fam, fam, hey, family time. Yeah. It's a movie. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it tells you a lot of, of uh, how true boxers come on. It's, it, yeah. it, it's, not easy, it's not easy for them. Like I said, right. they have to find a way to weigh it up. That's, that's, it's yeah. a very tough one. Yo, the, uh, and I did watch another movie. I watched another movie last week that was Creed, and I know you like it, Will. I was a little disappointed. What? <laughs> what? I was disappointed. <laughs> it was completely the opposite of everything we've talked about and everything that was Rocky was about. It was just – everything was so easy for him to go through that. It just – it was it – was, I was disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I know, Will. <laughs> That was one of the, you know, that was one of the greatest movies of all time. It was not Rocky One or Rocky Two, man. It just wasn't. It was, but it was Creed. It was, it was Creed. It was um, Creed, but it was a little too much. Like, you know, I understand he went to, he was supposed to, he went went to Mexico and, and fought his way up, but it, it just seemed, he just got that title shot way too easy. He got it way um, too easy, but at least, you know, I here's the thing, they. They didn't make it like an exhibition fight like Rocky Balboa where he fought Mason Dixon, uh, who's Antonio Tarver. They didn't make it like – it because there's no such thing as an exhibition. You fight for the title, you don't fight for it. At least the kid fought for the title. Mm-hmm. I loved the whole setting in, in in England for that fight too. I thought that was a perfect setting for that. Yeah, um, and it was just a little bit too – maybe it was just the, the times that this that this you know movie took place, and it just – it didn't – it didn't take me back to that the Rocky style where Rocky really struggled to like build himself up and get into the fight. It just seemed like everything was a little bit just too easy for things to happen. 
Uh, I know, I know what you get into. I, 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 I already. It, yeah. it, 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 it was because it was because of the cheating, wasn't it? The chicken <laughs> was too slow. It well, was that's the thing. Too slow. Yeah, where, where do you find those slow chickens? <laughs> the, those slow chickens are the ones that end up at Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? Right. <laughs> 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 I I thought there was one mistake they made with that movie, and that was no Paulie. I would yeah. not have well, killed Paulie off. You would have had a whole dynamic with Paulie and the Creed character. Right. Now I heard I heard the guy who plays Paulie's. I don't want to say he's in bad health, but I, Burt Young. I, I heard he's not. Maybe I don't know if he can act anymore. Was maybe part of the reason is what I've heard. Or you know, he, he died in The Sopranos. He he couldn't come back. You remember, oh, remember that in the Soprano? Oh, he kept coughing that whole that coughing fit he had in there. Oh, oh, that was yeah. But but it was no, so there was no Polly, which I think you needed. That what made all the Rocky movies was Polly, and he was that foil for Rocky. And Rocky didn't have that foil. The guy mm-hmm. who would add comic relief, just say ridiculous things and just do some ridiculous things. So that that was one thing why I can't put it up as the best rock, but I really enjoyed the movie. I'll disagree with you on that. Yeah, it just did. It was a nice I mean, movie. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you watch Hands of Stone and then you watch Creed, this well, com- two completely opposite sides of the spectrum. One, one is just a true story. The other yeah. one, it, 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 it's a movie. It's quite, it's quite different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, fun, the the interesting thing is Duran became a favorite of mine. Is what I'll say. Um, again, I was a, I watched a lot of boxing with my dad and my grandfather and my uncle, and I was a Sugar Ray guy. But I in that second fight when Leonard was showboating against Duran, it was really annoying me. <laughs> right? I kind of and I started rooting for Duran in that fight. Right, even though I I knew by like round six he wasn't going to win the fight. But, you know, Leonard's doing all the showboating in it. And then, uh, and I became a Duran fan. Duran lost like two or three fights in a row after that. He came to New York City in the summer. He fought this kid named Davey Moore, a local kid, for the, for the junior middleweight title and won it. And the garden was absolutely electric that night. I wasn't in the garden, but I watched it on a closed circuit. And I, you could feel it was a big night when he – that was when he won his third world title that night. So mm-hmm. – but, there's, if, there's always some passion in the sport. It's incredible. Huh? Yeah, there's a lot. And ESPN did one of those thirty for thirties with Duran and Sugar Ray. That was a it was a really good episode. So, but they yeah. didn't. An, it never. An, I never felt Duran answered the question that Leonard wanted yeah. to hear. Yeah. Why did you? It, it was very very interesting. Though. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I don't Durant know if that went, answer would ever come. Yeah, because Leonard went down to Panama to do that. Yep. Interesting. Anyway, Dad, I think uh, we're going to have to do boxing talk from time to time. As Phil Zengi is a big boxing fan as well who sponsors this segment. Um, and um, But that that is uh, the debonair ideal for this week. 